just don't know if it's silicone or what, but it's very strange. This will be my third and final episode on the Blazer. I'm gonna cover the power steering reservoir. I went to the junkyard, got some parts, do a little fab with that. I'm also gonna replace the lack assembly because that's broken. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate all the new viewers and all the suggestions you guys are giving me. Please, whatever you want to see, let me know. I have a ton of vehicles to work on. I had a successful run today getting parts at the parts galore junkyard at an eight mile. I got these wing nuts for the air cleaner off of Fiero. They use the same 2.5 liter in some of the early models. And I found a power steering pump reservoir the only one I could find was actually from uh, like a 97 Firebird with a V6. I'm going to have to modify the bracketry somewhat, but it's the closest thing I'd find that should fit in here because I'm having a heck of a time finding parts for this little guy. One thing off the list. It's a long list. Biggest thing I'm going to fix this, this go around with this Blazer is the power steering pump. The pump itself might not be bad, but I'm not going to be sure until I can get some of the crust off of it. They have a very strange setup for how they move the reservoir for the power steering pump. It's mounted to the fan shroud, which I don't believe is factory. I can't find this reservoir. And it's broken and they put it back together with, I just don't know if it's silicone or what, but it's very strange. You can see that's part of the, the housing that broke off. So I got a replacement of the closest thing I could find, which I'll show you now. So this is the closest thing I could find that should work. It's actually out of a 97 or so Firebird, which I'm pretty sure I said, V6 model. But this bracket, I should be able to modify and make it work. And it has two ports at the bottom that should be pretty close to the same size. I'm hoping this will solve my problem. And if it does, it was all a seven bucks. So hopefully it's a win. The so plan right now is to clean off the pump as much as I can, figure out what shape it's in, get the hose sizing, pull, the reservoir off see where i can mount the part that i got also check out the lines and likely go to the local parts place and get them if i can if i have to i'll get them from rock auto it really depends on timing and cost our first step of getting access to the pump of the reservoir is to take this intake duct off that should give us a lot better access now I'm gonna hose the pump down with brake clean, probably some of this as well, and see what I can do about getting this bracketry in the reservoir off. Wow, that is thick. It's not gonna be a good way for me to get you in here and do the work at the same time, but where this wrench is, is the bottom bolt securing the bracket. So I'm gonna pull that off, then get to the top one. I was gonna try to show you getting that off, but there's no point. So. There's actually still a little fluid in there. Huh. You don't get to eat my $100 ratchet. The lower bolt was a real pain in the butt because it has a stover nut on it. A stover nut is basically an egg shaped nut and it's a lock nut. It's very rarely if ever used in automotive circumstances so I highly doubt this was a factory bolt. Take the hose from the reservoir to the power steering pump off. Why not? You get a better shot of the power steering pump goo reservoir but I don't know what the hell. I'm gonna pull the old reservoir off the bracket. I already tapped these back with a rubber mallet. And this probably isn't gonna go super smooth. No, it's not. Gonna have to hit it a little more. This bracket is definitely a weird one. I don't know if I'm gonna have to reuse this bracket, but I at least needed this off to keep trying to fit the new one on. Now I'm gonna try a different approach. I'm gonna try to straighten this arm out, and I think I can mount this to the back of the power steering pump, but we will see. So I flatten this out and flatten both arms out. What I'm gonna do is cut this here and 
give me a way to see if I can actually fit this in. She's flat. Still in prototype stage. With the arm flattened out, I think I'm gonna have to modify this to come back a little bit and I'm gonna have to see if I can drill a hole in this bracket. I need to try to take that much material out. Right now this wants to hit the power steering pump here on the back side. I need to build a standoff for the for the base to sit on the pump. So I need to see what I have in my stockpile of crap here. Ooh, that's ridiculously thick. I've got a spacer. I've got this formed to where I should be able to mount a bolt here and a bolt there. This will keep it up off the off the pump itself. I'm gonna have to drill into this bracket on this down here, so I'm gonna mark it right now. Take this off and get my little right angle drill in here and get it done. The hole's drilled, I'm gonna hit it with brake clean, blow it off, and test fit the part again. I'm gonna mark the hole for the lower bracket. Hole's marked. Now we're gonna enlarge the hole for the bottom plate that sits down onto the pump. We'll go test fit it for the four millionth time. Gonna hit it with a wire wheel, scotch bright it, hit it with a little acetone, and give it a quick coat of paint just to prevent rust. Now the paint's finally dry on the bracket. I'm gonna get to installing it. I'm gonna tighten the vertical bolt first. Get the tank and I will start fitting the hoses to it. Now this should be fine, it's gonna be tight. It's in, it's home. Figure out the length of this and I'll be back. Well, the hoses are run, everything's clamped up. There's space between everything, nothing's rubbing and it's secure. I'm gonna let it sit, run the fluid down to the pump because it's basically right there. And then we'll come back, throw it up on jack sands and uh, turn the wheels for an hour and a half. That's been sitting for about 20 minutes. Fluid level is going down just a hair. I'm seeing no evidence of leaks, which is great. Run the steering wheel back and forth a couple times, try to get some fluid cycling through there, check it and then start it and keep doing it and hopefully clear it out of the system. Because there's definitely gonna be air. Check it. Not much. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it, run it through, and see what we get. The door chime just decides when it does and doesn't want to work. Let's see where our fluid's at. Ooh, pressurized. It went down quite a bit. I'm gonna add just a little bit more fluid to it. That should be good, that's almost a quart. Oh 
oh yeah, it definitely sucked down quite a bit of fluid. I've run over everything. I'm seeing no evidence of any leaks at this point. So I go through probably 20 more times, check the fluid, and then if everything's good, I'll take it for a little road test. Yep, no fluid went down this time. Close the hood, move 17 cars, we'll go for road test. Still a little air in the system, but I'll end up doing this for another 45 minutes to get it out. Vesting dude's driving. It's driving better each time I run the sucker, which is great. On to our next project. My next project with this blazer is the hatch. The glass opens, the struts are not connected, but the hatch itself does not want to open. We've got a replacement part for the hatch. I'm going to back it into my garage so I can get the glass and keep it open and work on the hatch itself. This is the doorman replacement part. There's the part number. I'm gonna see what I can do to get the gate open. I'm not sure if the latch is broken or if it's just simply because you don't have the leverage to turn it, you can't open it. Oh, well, the whole thing's loose, that could be part of it. I'm gonna do a little bit of fooling around, see if I can get this thing to open. I don't want to damage the keys. Well, I'm glad the screwdriver worked because that makes my life a whole lot easier. I can take this trim off and get the lock assembly inside. There's a screw right here on either side of the trim, and there's a series of screws along the bottom. There's one screw missing. I don't know if there's any trim clips. We'll find out in a second. Apparently not. Get you in here for a look at this assembly. I believe I'm going to have to take this cover plate off that holds, that retains the glass, and then I should be able to access the lock. There's a small arm coming off the lock assembly which moves the rod. There's one rod per side. It looks like the lock is completely separate from all the mechanisms. So I should be able to pull the lock itself out and simply put the new one in. That's what it looks like so far. We'll see in a minute when I get it out. This is the lock assembly cylinder. This is a retaining clip. It looks like this clip was not put back in correctly because it should hold the lock assembly tight. Take the retaining clip out. You should be able to take this lock cylinder out, but it just appears to be damaged. So this might be a little fun. There we go. Installation should be the opposite of removal. Come on, little guy. This is going to be the fun part, it's getting this little booger in here. Sorry, I had to try to reposition it because I can't get my hands in here. I'll try to demonstrate this on the other one. There's just, you probably couldn't see much, but I needed space to be able to see what I was doing. Take in the key and check it for proper operation. Sweet. So this, this edge would ride onto the body itself. This comes in the back. It goes under these little lips right there. And then it wedges itself so that it holds it tight against the body. Before I put anything else on or mess with the glass, I'm going to make sure this hatch works. Sweet. Once the glass is open, the hatch will freely open itself. You cannot get the glass open without the key. Put the glass locating bracket back on, put the trim on, and we're done. This little locating tab right here does help to position the lock and the latch with the glass, so I'm going to use the witness marks on the existing part to hopefully relocate it without having to do too much adjustment. I'm going to check the location of the glass into this tab, make sure it all works, then I'll put the trim panel on it. This is a locator hole that lines up with the tab on the glass. 
this is the tablet and the glass that goes into that locating hole. Everything lines up well, so we're good to go. The trim fits over the top and simply slides on. I know I've said this before, I like to try to line up all the screws in plastic before I tighten anything down to make sure everything lines up. I'm going to see if I have another screw to replace this one. Other than that, this panel's done. I was able to find one little screw that'll fit the bill, thankfully. We're good to go. My friend came by to check out the progress of the blazer. He wants to take it and drive it and see where he's going to go with it, if he's going to sell it or keep it. This is a sweet little truck. I'm glad I got a chance to work on it. Thanks for watching my third and final episode on the blazer. The vehicle's going to live on another channel called Boosted Street Junk. They bought it, are going to turn it into a really cool car. Please definitely tune into that. Their content should be coming out soon on it. Like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. I guess there's a bell you can ring. Thanks for watching. Oh, and at some point, my garage updates might actually be. Done.